All right, here we are, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kader, and today we are joined by my buddy here. We've been trying to get this on the books for probably a good maybe two or three weeks. Yep. Simon Beckett, how are you, buddy? I'm fantastic. How and are you? I'm doing fantastic. And Simon actually comes from Pivot Turn Property Management. Yep, that's right. I that's... got that right. Pivot Turn. So with that being said, I wanted to kind of get into a little bit of the pros and cons about property management. Why should someone hire property management? What are the pros in it? What are the cons in it? Tell me a little bit more. Great. Love this question because this is part of what I have uh, conversations all the time, nearly on the daily with people who are looking mm -hmm. because property management is not for everybody. So the pros, you have somebody. I want my landlords out there to listen to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very important. I tell them all the time, go freaking hire a property management. Yeah. It's not your job. Yeah. This is why. And the, the first one is, and usually a lot of time is, I don't have the time. I don't want the hassle. Yeah. And we hear that all the time is I, I and I'm have... also, I'm not their property manager either. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the other thing too. Exactly. So, you know, real estate agents, I, I love that exact statement because you guys are great. You're providing your own service, yeah. but you're not property managers. Correct. Right. We all have our areas of expertise. I don't do sales. I'll find you a great tenant. I have no problem with it. But the second they're in there, that's your Bingo. thing to deal with. I have, my job is done. My services exactly. are outlined and there, this is where they are and they're yeah. done. Exactly. Now it, so it's that, you know, that person who is a doctor or three, honestly, single mom with three kids, I've got this rental property now. That's a lot to handle, yeah. right? If, if something does, cause it doesn't always go wrong, but if perfect, that we're, what we're here to do. Yeah. Um, on top of that, it's the knowledge. If, well, we have to demonstrate it, of course, as I've talked about, a lot of the time property managers are going to come with the knowledge of the legalities, how to properly conduct ourselves, because especially in Ottawa, with the addition of more recently. I got a great story for you on that one, actually. Yeah. So I have a property, well, not a property manager. I have a landlord of mine that I've been working with for probably a good four years or so. He showed up one day at the property unannounced, visiting, <laughs> visiting, because the property had, it's like a sort of a housing, uh, not a housing project, but like a multiple people are living in there. It's, you know, H1 has a room rented and what have okay. you. Okay. And what's been happening is they're, they're basically, he showed up to visit one of those people because it's one of his friends, but it just happens to be one of the tenants as well. Notice that there's a group, massive party going on and he just lost his mind. And both parties were threatening to call the police. And I guess he won because he's just like, well, I'll kick you out. I'm gonna call the police on you and this and that. And it was just like, so he's telling me the story after and I was like, in shock and he's like well, why are you in shock i said because you're an idiot yep. that's grounds for completely taking you to the landlord harassment and board first of all two you could like if you had because he was threatening also violence oh and i said if you can if you had gone that way it would have been worse for you it would have been jail time is it worth it and then i i brought up that that incident that happened in i think it was london ontario or is it uh kitchener i can't remember but that the, the whole feud between the tenant and the landlord and then one, I can say which one because there's been so many one person ended up like I guess both actually both the tenants oh ended up getting I do remember this one now yeah and I was like like is this worth it no. no no money in the world is worth you going to jail no and he goes yeah I said hire a freaking company because you cannot like your your issue with trying to control your anger does not suffice the money the amount of money that you're making it's just it's not worth it hire somebody and then you can take it out on them. <laughs> it's just one person. And at that point, th there's a, a saying that we, we have back home. It says something along the lines of, if you're renting out your butt, you don't keep touching for it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I tell that to every landlord before they start thinking, oh, okay, yeah, no, you're right. And that's why you hire property management so you, they can take care of that so it doesn't look like, you know, a massive landfill after. Yeah. And, and that's a great point because if a landlord cannot remove themselves emotionally Correct. from the property and recognize this is now an investment property. It's a, it's a business. It's, it's exactly, it's a business. If you can't do that, hire a property manager exactly. because you're going to be too emotionally invested. And then when something happens, whether it's wear and tear, whether it's an accident by the tenant, you're going to have an emotional response mm -hmm. instead of a logical response. And that's where things lead to you know, those issues that we, we hear about all the time. Yeah. So um, let's go back to the pros and cons because we kind of went away a little bit from it. So, yeah. So jumping is, um, so time, essentially, we'll call it time and hassle and, and whatnot. The expertise. And like what I just said, 
if you can't emotionally remove yourself from it, those are really where the pros come in. Yeah. Um, as, of course, as you get into the larger buildings or commercial and whatnot, then it's, you know, if you're an investor, you have other things to focus on. Your, your day-to-day is not running. <coughs> you're, nope. you're all, yeah, you're focusing on running and, and continuing to grow the portfolio versus yeah. the day-to-day The day-to-day stuff. operations, leave that to us. They need this, you know, their problem with the plumbing. That's not your job. Nope. Your job is to bottom line. And then a, a big one is is if you're if you're leaving the country, yeah. That if don't be an absent landlord. Oh, don't that, do it. That's the worst. Yeah. I've, I've got I think on the go right now about three or four that I'm I'm selling because of that situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the worst thing you could do to yourself is because at the end of the day, like if they're calling you for something, you're not here to respond. And even if you are, the second they get a whiff of you're not in the country, they get a whiff of oh you don't care, and then. Your property so goes to shit. I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and I, if we're going to do it again, we're going to go off of this question. Yeah. This is one of the reasons. So we, we go to our properties every three to four months. Yeah. We visit. And one of the visits we do is usually is we'll do the furnace filter changes. It gets us in now to our units every three to four months. So it's eyes on your property. And that's exactly why, because it's not cool. The tenants could do it, but there's a preventative maintenance aspect there, which I won't dive into that, but it shows the tenants that we're around or watching. And that we care. I'm glad you brought that point up because the furnace filter is probably your biggest indicator of how clean the house is, mm-hmm. right? Like I've yeah. done it before where I'm like walking around doing my thing like, and we get the inspection and the inspector will pull out and you're like, oh, yep. right off the bat, you know, they have dogs, they have cats, they have like, even if, if this place smells phenomenal. Yep. Now you can tell because of the furnace had sucked everything in and it's, it's stuck. But you know what I love? I love especially... We're not smoking in the unit. No, we always smoke outside. All right. You check the filter. It tells you the whole story. Yeah. You can't get around a furnace filter and lie to me that you're not smoking in the unit when it, we can pull it out and you can see the yellow, you can see the gunk on there. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's weed, I don't care if it's cigarettes, it doesn't matter. It's, you're doing it. Yeah. You can't lie to me now. Yeah. So I love it for that reason. Uh, you know, There's so many reasons why I like doing these visits yeah. frequently but it's also because again because of you know you take it away from the tenant doing that maintenance because they don't care it's not their problem no they don't at the end of the day right one of the the, the greatest uh, sort of feedback we can give each other as, as agents is when we're visiting and then you know the other agent calls hey how was it how was the visit blah 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 if i say something like ah it's tenanted right off the bat their heart sinks like yeah, yeah. we we know it's been not been taken care of so with that being said, it also takes away from the tenant, I feel, like, you know, three or four bucks that they're going to spend on on, the, on that, but it gets you in, like you said. And, and even more so, a lot of tenants don't know. They don't know that it's something that needs to be done. A lot of tenants are have not been homeowners. Correct. So, and then we get new immigrants, students, whatever. They're not familiar with they're the not- code. They're not familiar with the way that, you know, winter is harsh, the summer is harsh. Everything is harsh when it comes to weather here. We had to respond to a call yesterday. We've lost power. Have you checked the breaker panel? What? What's that? Please go downstairs to your basement. <laughs> we walked them through it. These were newer immigrants, and they, they had not been exposed to what a breaker panel is yeah. as, as much as it's easy. It's simple. We, very basic stuff for us. That's how we, I have to go into it and kind of treat everyone as an adult, but as a child at the same time, just not yeah. knowing. Like, what did you plug in that just went off to make this happen? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first question. Well, because they had no idea. They thought they just lost power in the whole upstairs. I'm like, guys, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you overloaded it. Have you checked your circuit breaker, though? Have you checked the breaker panel? Mm-hmm. They had no idea what that was. So, you know, if you don't know that, you don't know furnace filters, you know, it, it, then the list keeps going. So we have to be on top of it. So let's go back again to that same question that we keep dodging. We'll do the cons. <laughs> let's do the cons. Yeah. What are the cons of hiring a property management? So cost, that is your, your first one. Good property management, there's, there's cheap property management, but good property management is going to cost you. Correct. But in my opinion, it pays for itself. Yes. Yes. In very much so. Mind, involvement. And if, if your time is, so here's the thing. It all comes down to two things. One how much is my time worth yep. and should I outsource it or not? And then two, 
is this good enough for me from, from a headache perspective? Do I want to take this headache on? Am I able to do it? Am I capable? Or do I want to hire it? So this is, and this is what I tell people is, okay, because they'll be like, what? You charge this much or it costs this much? I'm like, okay, I understand. When we're looking at, let's say, you know, a couple thousand dollars in rent, you're taking this much off and it sounds like so much. And then that's every single month. What? Then I ask them, how much is their time worth? So example, how much per hour is your time worth? Let's say. Like 250, 300, <sighs> depends on the day. So I use a lower number because not everyone is at that level. So I say, maybe your time's worth Fifty dollars an hour, an hour 50, fifty or sixty, hour, yeah. which isn't outrageous by any means. And I'm charging you, let's say, because it varies depending on on the income. Let's say I'm charging you two ten, right? So we've got three, maybe four hours of my time. If if I'm valuing my time at sixty dollars an hour, and you're gonna try and nickel and dime me down further to pay less for your property management. Mm-hmm. Just, so it just it puts in perspective. If I and that's the thing too. Like, let me add to it. I don't mean to cut you off no, there, but good. let me add to it. Uh, in that month, sure, I might have cost you two hundred bucks, but like, let's just say I'm dealing with six or seven issues from that tenant. I'm not charging you more. That's it. Unless those issues require fixing stuff. Yeah. But if it's really just returning phone calls and this and that, like, and sometimes it could just be completely unreasonable. Like that, just the tenant is just an unreasonable person. So. This is where good property management is going to cost, but it's going to pay back in dividends. And, and I have to, I value my time. I run a business here. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be valued at $40, $30 yeah. an hour, because when you try to nickel and dime us down, that's what you're doing. You're saying your time is not valuable. I want to hire you, but your time's not valuable because we have so much to do. We have so much to do. We have so many different hats going on, yeah. right? From leasing to accounting, to advertising, to then Legal compliance, because of course, that's a big part of it. We have to make sure we're compliant. We've got the leases, we've got maintenance calls, we've got, the list goes on. There's not a day that I can sit there and go, wow, I'm caught up. Never, the list is never ending. But we'll jump back and we'll keep going that question. So cons, you do relinquish control. And this is one that a lot of people will struggle with, especially at the get-go. If you don't have the investor mindset, you are relinquishing control to somebody, which means you aren't making the decisions the day-to-day decisions about your property anymore, which a lot of people can struggle with. Yeah, but that's, again, that's something that goes back to you as, as the landlord to say, look, I, do I want to be a control freak here and deal with this on my own yep. and then pay for it out of my own time? Or do I want to just give it to somebody else, relinquish that control? Yeah, sure, I might be a little bit you know, rigid at the beginning, but at least I'm not worried about the day-to-day stuff and I'm focusing my time on something else, maybe growing my portfolio. Maybe, you know, instead of bickering with that tenant, maybe I'm looking at the next asset to buy. Yeah. Evaluating the next asset. Like using that time, the three or four hours that I could be spending on trying to fix that dishwasher that didn't work just because they maybe overloaded it or whatever. And then, you know, use that time to maybe talk to an investor about something else or talk to a a mortgage broker about the next property or, you know, go out on visits with me to buy the next multi-unit that you're looking at. I mean, it makes sense. It's very an easy concept for the larger investors or people who are more seasoned and sophisticated. But yeah. a lot of my clients are coming in on the lower end. They're mm-hmm. coming in with their their inherited property. It's their first investment, whatever. So that control thing is, it's hard. And until we establish, hey, we're here working for you, trust us. And we establish that and we earn that trust because that trust has to be earned. It We have to kind of just hold their hand and walk them through. And it takes time. They do get there. But it's something that I, I experience all the time, just saying, hey, trust us. We are here to help. We are there gonna- situations where you're like, okay, this is, I'm not good for you. Like, I, you yes. know, me being a property manager for you is not really servicing you properly. Uh, what is that like? So the big one is if I, I want to be a good quality housing provider, because that's what I am, is I'm a housing provider. Um, if you as a landlord are just not willing to put any, I'm not, I'm not saying renovate it and make it brand new. I'm saying maintain mm-hmm. and, and justifiably spend money. But if you're turning around and, and you don't, you're nope, nope, I don't want to spend it. Nope, I don't want to spend it. That is not the relationship I want to have with my clients. It's not the type of landlord I want to be for those tenants. So I will not work with them if they get to that point. I have a couple clients who they're, because we have a spend limit that they dictate to us. Um, we let our clients choose that, which is a 
unique feature. Many people have like a fixed amount, um, but we allow clients to choose that. So I have clients who actually, we ha- are not allowed to spend a cent without authorization. But as long as when we come to them and say, hey, I have an issue, I have something I need to spend money on. And as long as it's reasonable and they are saying, okay, that sounds fine. How much is it going to cost? Okay, go do it. That's fine. But if you are not willing to spend the money to maintain your property, because here's the thing, if you don't maintain your property, the tenants are going to be unhappy and what are they going to do? They're going to leave or then they're going to file and bring us to the landlord and tenant board. Correct. Right? Maintain your property. And you owe it to the tenant to have like the least amount of enjoyment of the property. Yeah. That enjoyment of the property is massive, by the way. Like trying to justify it to the LTB is huge sometimes. Yeah. And I've, I've been on both sides as a tenant and as a landlord at the LTB. And it just, it's not a nice nope. conversation to have either way. Nope, not at all. But you, you kind of touched on it. The tenants have a right to enjoy a, a well-maintained property. And at the same time, if you're not maintaining your property, well, those tenants are going to leave and who's going to want to come in there? Somebody who does not take care of your property. Correct. Somebody who's going to start causing you more problems. So it's really something, if you want good quality tenants who are going to stay for a number of years and reduce your vacancy, because you don't want tenants leaving and turning around every single year either, unless it's you know it's part of your strategy and you're focusing on student rentals, you want that consistent income. Right. I want tenants who are going to stay for three or for four years. Well, it's also because it's kind of costs you. Like I'll, I'll give you simple, simple working with some of the landlords that I have. It's, it costs them about a month of rent. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just cost of getting somebody else. But you also have the, you know, maybe a month or two without being rented. So you might have some cleaning costs in there as well, cleaning because costs, exactly. tenants are only required to yeah. leave a kind of like you, you probably put your uh, your sale contracts in a reasonably Mop clean Mop, it. Exactly. Yeah. Even even though if we tell them, oh, you bring it back to, you know, primer or white or whatever, they still, under the LTB, they don't have to do shit. Yeah. And the thing is, we can ask. And funny enough, we are sometimes successful getting them to do it because I had somebody, we, we've got a tenant leaving, we've got new ones coming in. Uh, and when we went in to do a pre-move out inspection, we found out he had gotten a dog, which was fine. And the dog had chewed on the baseboards. Mm-hmm. We said, those need to be fixed but we did it in a way that was polite, professional, you know, to the point when we showed up a, a week later and all brand new baseboards, we replaced some, they were all fixed, they're all painted. It was great. Thank you very much. Comes down to how we interacted with the tenant beforehand, the respect we gave him throughout the tenancy. And he was fine to go ahead and do that. Cause he recognized, yep, no, that was my damage. Yeah. Most so people are reasonable. And that's the thing. Like exactly. you know, LTB should be the last resort yep. ever. And, and then here's where I, it, I, I kind of struggle with tenants and also landlords that are always, oh, I'm going to bring in the LTB. Have you thought of about maybe a little bit more of a peaceful conversation first? I'm sure if you start giving in a little bit, they give in a little bit, gonna, you're going to come to a consensus and you're going to fix this problem. Because here's the thing, from the landlord perspective, it's expensive to go to the landlord and tenant yeah. court. It's expensive. So unless it's worth your time and your time is, you know, the damage it's caused, it's thousands of dollars and there's still no guarantee that you get the money back. Nope. It's not worth it for a couple hundred dollars, eat it and move on. And I'm not saying, hey, we're just going to let tenants walk all over us, but I'm saying there is a time and a place to bring a tenant to the landlord and tenant board. And there's a time and a place to say, this is, there's a cost of doing business here. There is inherent risk in being a landlord, yeah. especially with the way the rules are there is a cost of doing business and we have to recognize yeah. that. Yeah, and, and, and don't be butt hurt about it. Like you you shouldn't. At the end of the day, look, it's it's like having a car. You you're gonna hit a snowbank, you're gonna it's it's the rock the rock that just get accidentally yeah. gets kicked you, up on the highway is gonna be gonna... yelling at the, the uh, you know the tractor in front of you because at the end of the day like it they have the right to be on the road just as much as you do. Yep. And the same here, like at the end of the day, just call it, move on, fix it, figure it out, who cares? but it's not worth it. It's not always going to be the case for you to go. So I want to touch a little bit more on, you know, we've talked about what makes a good uh, property management. We've talked about the pros and cons and all of that. What's the next thing for you guys at Pivot Turn? So, you know, we're, we're really pushing our expansion right now. You know, personally, you know, we were at a meeting last night. They were talking about goals and whatnot. My goal is to hit 100 units by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. 100 units. And that's going to be a, a big push. But, you know, we've got the systems in place. We've expanded our systems to be more robust, especially on the maintenance side. We've hired a maintenance person as well, which is a little bit early in terms of where we are as a company. But we want to I want to be on top of that. I want to deliver 
quality service first and foremost. If that means I need to eat a little bit, you know, less income as a you know owner for a bit, 100% because that quality and that high standard needs to be maintained for me. That's a, and that's a pride thing. Mm-hmm. So we're looking to expand. We're actively pushing to do that. We're moving solely into the multifamily, right? Question for mm-hmm. you. Just on the fact that you you know you're looking to hire somebody or you hired somebody already for um, handyman work yep. and stuff like that. Why, for me as a landlord, why would I want to like why do I care if you hired somebody or you're just outsourcing the work? Yep, great question. Really good question. Comes down to quality control, cost control, and speed of repair. Mm-hmm. When we're always reliant on a third party contractor or a third party vendor, we are at the mercy of their availability. Correct. And if they are busy, because here's the thing. Good quality, and I know you can appreciate this, good quality contractors are hard to come by and they're booked yep. because they're good. So if I can have somebody and, in-house- And the, the worst when you ask them to come and fix somebody else's problem. Yeah, that's it. So if I can have somebody in-house, and they're not, we're not gonna be doing the certified trades, the plumbing, the electrical, the HVAC. We, we have the companies, the vendors for that. Mm-hmm. But having the in-house stuff where, hey, this window doesn't wanna close. Hey, um, this door is not you know latching properly. Like, we need to replace all, that's all basic handyman work. But if we can have that stuff in house, we can reduce the cost for our clients. And, and truthfully, it's not gonna be by much sometimes, it, or it may even be a little more expensive, but the quality we can guarantee, I'm not letting anyone do crap work. I want a high quality of work done so we can guarantee the quality and the response times are much faster. Mm-hmm. Instead of waiting a couple of days to have that vendor come out, it's a lot of the time now, it's the same day or next day. Yeah. But where I see this might be a, a bit of a deterior for some of your landlords is that the limitation of the skill set that the handyman has. Well, the same limitation would apply though if I'm hiring a third party, right? Yeah. Because if I'm hire, I'm not going to hire a carpenter to you know rehang a cupboard because oh the you know just wear and tear and it's pulled away from the side of the cupboard. I'm not hiring a carpenter for that. I'm hiring a handy person. Mm-hmm. But for them just to come out. Right? How long is that drive? It's a half an hour drive out. Plus then, you know, even if it's a 15 minute fix, they usually have a minimum charge, right? So it, it, it's the same issues, whether it's in-house or not. Mm-hmm. But when it's in-house, then who's responsible? You're coming back to me. We're responsible, right? right. So it's, it goes down to what, what I can control. And this way we can control the end product. Yeah, as long as it's, like I said, generalist, yeah, he is going to be a, or she is going to be a generalist. And as, as long as that's what the work is required, it should be fine. And I mean, they're also doing some coordination for major, cheaper, la- yeah. larger projects, right? So they're, they've got a bit of a, a two prong role. So we've got a bunch of larger projects. Um, you know, we've had a renovation go on. We've got a full house painting going on. We've got we're building a massive shed in a backyard for a client. So we've got a bunch of these larger projects and the work is going to be conducted by a third party vendor or third party vendors. But they're also doing they're overseeing the coordination. They're also making sure the quality of the work that's delivered by those third party vendors meets our standards. So they, they've got a, a multi-role approach here. So they do the, some of that work, but then they also play a role in kind of the coordination of oversight. Fantastic. It looks like you got your sight on the, the 100 mark there. Hopefully you'll make it by the end of the year. Well, and the other one is I'm opening a sister company. Amazing, what, what is it for? It's property management in Mexico. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so we're currently in the works right now. I don't have a name uh, because we're back and forth. Opening a business down there is a little different than opening one up here. Um, so I've got a business partner down there, um, a local person, because I wouldn't do it on my own. I'm a little too white to you know, <laughs> go down there because, <laughs> yeah, I get walk, taken advantage of and walked all over. But that's going to be operational by the fall. So that's a big get to big Where about in Mexico? So we're focusing on Playa del Carmen, Cancun, and Tulum. I might have some context for you there. Yeah, well, I'd love that. Especially for Tulum, Playa del Carmen. Yeah, so we're going to be doing... Uh, down there, to be a property manager, you have to be licensed. Yeah. Uh, and you have, it's kind of like it is in the States, you have to be actually be a realtor. So we're going to be able to do the buying and selling, the investment for our clients, and as well, but with a big focus on the property management. Mm-hmm. So we're bringing in what we've done up here, and we're going to be recreating it for the market down there with the same mindset. Because again, there's always you know a different market. What are the pain points? And it comes down to the professionalism of the current companies down yeah. there. It's not the same. And it, it, it's also interesting because there's a lot of expat as well too in, uh, in Mexico, especially those areas that are Canadian that are definitely yep. just don't necessarily want to hire anybody. They want to hire somebody that they trust and whatever. So that kind of makes for it. 
Um, dangerous, you and I talking, because if I don't have a time clock, I know I'm going to run over yeah. <laughs> and over and over. So, you know, last time we had a coffee, I think we were a little bit over and it was a phone call that was just kind of like, okay, I got to get, yeah. get going here. Yeah. Simon and I can talk for hours. Really no appreciate kidding. you coming on the show. I'd uh, love me. to hear more and more about your success, man. You guys bring a lot of value to the city. Uh, a lot of your landlords are speaking highly of you and really appreciate that. So for folks that are watching, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe if you like what you see. Uh, if you have any questions for, for Simon, and, you know, drop it in the comments. I can deliver and have him give you a call. I promise you on that. Uh, and he's really good to, to get back to. Communication is his number one goal. Yep. Um, and for, you know, to get more and more episodes like this, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you. Thanks again. Appreciate it, Simon. Thank you.